For this project, I'm making a geometric wood art piece. You can find these all over Pinterest right now. So I took inspiration from different ones that I liked and started drawing out the design. All right, so I built this frame. It's about 28 inches long, one foot wide. And I just built it out of MDF boards that are this thickness one by two, just like the wood that you can get from the Dollar Tree. So this is the 10 inch piece of wood that I got from Dollar Tree, cut down the Home Depot part pieces that I got and made them all 10 inches the exact same size. So that's what we're gonna be working with is only this size and then cutting it down. This is going to have a diamond type pattern and the center of all of my boards will be cut at 90 degrees. You can cut this angle with a miter box or a saw, whichever you have. I decided to cut all of my angles before laying out the pattern. Whew. Cut down all of my wood. So I started out with these 10 inch pieces from the Dollar Tree. So right there, that's $16 if you wanted to get this from the Dollar Tree or probably about $4 from Home Depot. And then I cut 45 degree angles on all of them because we're gonna start putting them together. The only cuts needed for this project are straight cuts and 45 degree angles. And to build the pattern, I started laying out the wood pieces with the 45 degree angles together, forming a point and lined up four sets, one in front of the other. I did lay a scrap piece down in the middle so my wood didn't just fall while I was laying out my pattern. With the four sets laid out facing down, I'm going to do the same thing facing up. And the bottoms will start overlapping as this is where I'm gonna make another straight cut. When I was happy with where the spacing in the middle is, I drew a line and cut these pieces down. Now you can start to see the pattern coming together. This is a symmetrical design, so both the top and bottom will be cut the same way. Once both sides are cut down, here's what it should look like. We aren't quite done yet though. Next I took the frame and laid it down on top of the pattern this time. This way I can draw a line and know exactly where to cut so the shape fits perfectly inside my frame. I also numbered each piece so I knew where it belonged. This cut is gonna be a 45 degree angle so you should end up with eight pieces that have a 45 degree angle and a straight cut and then eight pieces with two 45 degree angles in opposite directions. This is what everything should look like all cut. I took a fine grit sandpaper to go over all of the cut edges and made sure they were nice and smooth. And now it's time to paint. I'm using fawn as the main color and creating an ombre using white and black. And the way these are painted is what will bring that design to life. So starting with fawn by itself, I painted what will be the second row from the bottom and then the third row from the top. The next section, I added some white to lighten the color, and then again, added more white until it was a very pale beige. And again, working my way around the pattern. Adding the black was very tricky. Instead of making the fawn color deeper, which is what I wanted, it turned out to be a charcoal-like color. And I ended up playing with this one a lot until I was somewhat happy with it. I do wish it was more of a deeper brown tone, but I couldn't figure out how to get that to work with the tone of the rest of this piece. For the background, my husband helped me cut a piece of plywood and I painted the top half of it and then that center square white and then the bottom black adding to the ombre vibe. All that's left to do is glue everything together and for this I used my wood glue hot glue so it would dry quickly. What do you guys think of this? I absolutely love the way this turned out. <laughs> I need a better vocabulary than to always saying I absolutely loved it. A few months ago, the sewage line in my basement backed up and we had a second kitchen down there. So we tore out all of the cabinets because pretty much everything down there got ruined and I decided to salvage some of the cabinet doors and the drawers that I could use for projects. So here is one of the cabinet door that has this really textured paint all over it. It's not in terrible shape, but it definitely needs a little bit of work. So I removed all of the hardware from it and then I need to strip off that paint 
point. So using this super strip that I just got from my local hardware store, I used this once before on a mirror that I thrifted. I'll link that video above, but it literally did nothing. And I realized it was because I was using this product wrong. So you want to put a thick coat of the stripping gel on your piece, and then you want to cover it with saran wrap. That saran wrap is going to activate the chemicals in this stripper, and that is going to help actually remove this paint. And this time it worked out beautifully. All right, guys, look at this. I'm sorry, the sun is glaring in right behind me right now. So I'm gonna try to block the view, but this actually worked. Like you can see, I don't know if you can really see on the camera, but it's really like bubbled up under there. So let's see if when I take the saran wrap off, I should be putting my gloves on. Like you can see how much it's bubbled up under there. Hold on, buddy. Oh yeah, so satisfying. Ugh. My son was not as impressed as I was, but I continued to strip off all of the paint. I did have to go in on the edges of the cabinet a second time just because I didn't put enough of the stripper on it the first time. I wanted to show you this process in case you ever come across some old cabinets that maybe just need the paint stripped off of them, but the wood is perfectly good to use for a home sign or something else. Once I had all of the paint removed, I did wipe it down really well with some crud cutter and a microfiber cloth, and then I'm going to sand it as well just to get off any of that leftover paint or residue. Next, I wanted to give this cabinet some detail since it was pretty plain on the face of it. So I have a few different varieties of clay here. I have two different air dry clays. I'm not really a fan of the Crayola. The paper clay people seem to love. And then I also have a polymer clay, which you bake in the oven. And that is the choice I am going with today. So I had to warm up my clay by just rolling it around, flattening it out, playing around with it a little bit, and then I'm going to put it into my IOD mold that I have, lining it first with my cornstarch so that my clay doesn't stick to the mold. The polymer clay didn't really come off like the air dried clay does when you take a tool to it. So I just used my fingers and rubbed off any of that excess clay. And then I repeated this process, making enough of these border pieces to go around my cabinet the way I wanted it to sit. I think I ended up making about eight of them. There were three on the long sides and then one on each of the short sides. And I just cut it down to fit how I wanted it to look. Next, we're gonna put it into the oven at 275 degrees for 15 minutes. And I did leave it on my cabinet to go into the wood because I wanted it to mold to the shape of the wood. I did keep a close eye on it to make sure that nothing happened and my house did not catch on fire. Once it was ready, I turned off my oven and let it cool down completely before removing the board and the clay from the oven. Next, I'm taking my E6000 and I'm just going to glue down all of my border pieces right in place. Once I had everything glued and dried, I'm taking some white paint and I am painting on the inside of the border. And then I also paint the border clay pieces white as well. So here's a coat of the white paint and you can see there are tannins and it is just bleeding through that paint and I don't want that to happen for our next step. So what I'm going to do is take this out to the garage and spray a coat of shellac to stop that from showing through our paint and then the final project. Next, I'm taking this beautiful greenery napkin that I got from Hobby Lobby. I used two of them. And first, I'm just going to separate that back layer from the front layer of my napkin. Then taking my decoupage glue, I wanted to work in small sections for this piece. So I'm adding a thin layer of the decoupage glue, then adding my napkin to the top, using my fingers to smooth it out. I did start going in with a sponge, but I really didn't like that technique. And I just decided to stick with my fingers instead.
Since the border was a little bit scalloped on the edges, I'm using this embossing tool just to make sure I can get this, this napkin right up against that paper. I probably should have added the napkin first before I added my border, but I honestly had no idea where I was going with this project other than the fact that I wanted to add on that border and everything else came afterwards. But if you were recreating this, I would suggest putting your napkin down first and then your border. Once I got to the second napkin, I made sure to add my decoupage glue along the seam first on where the two napkins met instead of at the top because if you overlap these, you kind of do see the underneath part of the napkin. And in my opinion, it just doesn't look as clean. It makes it look a little bit more DIY project, which was not what I was going for here. And again, I just worked section by section until I had my napkin completely laid down inside of the border. And once this was, dry, well, semi-dry, I got a little bit impatient, but I took my X-Acto knife and started cutting off the excess napkin that was over hanging over top of the border pieces. And I should have waited until it was completely dry because it was kind of ripping in some spots, but you can't even tell in the end, so it worked out just fine. Next, we're gonna paint the outside edge, taking this DI DIY paint in the color Apothecary. This is the first time I've used this paint. I really did love it. The color green I thought was going to be a little bit more similar to the moss green by Waverly and I think I prefer the tone of the moss green slightly better but I do really love the texture and the feel of this paint. But I'm just going to take this right up against the edge of my border and then painting the rest of the wood that is exposed. Next, I got these five inch MDF letters from Walmart and I really liked the natural look of these. So I took the color khaki by Apple Barrel, which was very similar because I did want them to still look like they were painted and have more of a finished look rather than looking like the MDF. And I just painted over top of all of my letters. I also wanted to add a little depth and detail to the letters. So I took the color fawn by Waverly, which was just a slightly darker brown and I painted painted the edges on both the outside and the insides of my letters. And this was a very subtle difference, but I think it was really effective in making these letters just pop off of my sign. And here you can see how it looks with the shadow and without. I really love the way it looks with that added detail. Then I'm just going to hot glue my letters down in place onto my sign. For last little detail on this project, I cut out This Is Us and Our Story with my Cricut using Lucidia handwriting. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I will link it in my description box. And I added This Is Us to the top left and Our Story to the bottom right. And that was it for this project. I absolutely love the way this turned out. I think it looks so high end for it originally starting out as a basic cabinet door. But what do you guys think? Project, I am taking a one by eight board and I am cutting it down to be 12 and three quarter inches long. I didn't feel like getting out my big chop saw to do this, so I just flipped the board over and cut it twice with my miter saw. Next, I'm going to take it over to the table saw and we're going to rip it down into two three inch strips so that I have two three inch by 12 and three quarter inch boards. Now, when you buy a wood board from the hardware store, it is not the exact measurement that it says. So even though this is a one by eight, it actually ends up being about three quarters of an inch by seven and three quarters of an inch. But what I had left over was roughly a one and a half inch piece after I cut down those two three inch strips. And I just cut that down to be three inches as well. Next, I'm going to take this inside and give it a light sanding just to get off any of those rough spots and then clean it up with my table top vacuum which I have linked in my description box. Next I'm going to take one of my three inch by let's just call it 13 inch boards and I'm going to find the center of it 
Then I'm going to space out every two inches from that center point and make a mark because we are going to drill some holes into this board, but only one of the boards, not both of them. I have this little copper piece that I cut off of a pipe, and this is what I'm gonna use for my guide of how big I want the holes because this is the exact size of the pipe we are going to use later. Next, I'm taking a spade bit and I'm using the 7 8 inch size. I just got this little set from Walmart for about $12. And the pipe that we are using is three quarters of an inch, but I need this seven eighths inch drill bit or spade bit because we need the entire pipe piece to fit through this board. Only the center of that pipe is what is the three quarters of an inch. And we're just going to drill our holes where I made all of the marks. And you want to drill your holes before we glue everything together. So after I have all of my holes drilled, then I'm going to take my wood glue. And I also have this amazing wood glue dispenser linked in my description box. I got it from Amazon, but I'm going to start out gluing my two one and a half by three inch pieces to one of my three by roughly 13 inch pieces. And then I'm going to glue the top piece on which has the holes we drilled out. Once everything's glued together, I'm going to clamp it together and I did leave it clamped together for a few hours until it had a nice secure hold. Next, we need to cut down our pipe. So I got this three quarters of an inch by five foot pipe, copper pipe from Lowe's. It was about $14 and I have plenty of this left over for additional projects. Then I'm gonna take this pipe cutter and we are going to use this to cut down our section. So I started out with a five inch piece and I'm going to put my pipe cutter right where I need to make the cut. And this thing is super easy. I did this in real time for you so you could see just how easy it is. The way you use this thing is you clamp it down tightly, twist it around a few times, screw it again so that it gets a little bit tighter on your pipe, twist it around a few times, tighten it, twist it around, and you keep doing that until the pipe completely cuts apart. And it is really easy to do. You guys know I have the weakest hand strength and I was able to do this without any issues. Once you have your piece cut off, there is gonna be some like jaggedy pieces from the cutter. Definitely do not stick your fingers in there. It is very sharp, but the cutter also comes with this little part on top where you can just rub the inside of the pipe around it and it will smooth it out for you. So I cut down two five inch pieces, two four inch pieces and one three inch piece. And then I just added some tapered candles on top. And here we have our beautiful and modern tapered candle holder. So what do you guys think of this one? It was super, super easy to put together and I just love the high end look of it. All right, so this next one is the most involved project in today's video. So I'm taking this wood scrap wood piece that I had in my garage. It's just plywood um, and I'm staining it with this Varathane sun bleached stain. It's like a grayish color. When I bought it, I actually thought it was more of like a whitewash, but it's definitely more gray. So I really wanted that wood tone to come through. So I wiped off the stain immediately after putting it on so that you could really see that variation and the grain come through. Next, I'm taking this plastic container. This was actually like a whey protein container and I'm going to cut it in half. Um, this was actually very, very thick plastic and was pretty difficult to cut. It took me quite a while. Had to have my husband help me for a little bit of it because that bottom was just so thick to try and get through. But I'm using this as a mold and hindsight's 2020. I really could have just used this itself and painted it, but I had this um, quick creep concrete that I had left over from another project and I've been wanting to use it again. So I thought this would be the perfect thing to use it on. I've been wanting to make like a 3D sign. I saw one at um, Dollar General that was of a, what are those things called? Watering can that had like flowers coming out of it. So that was my inspiration for this piece. So I just ended up mixing up some concrete 
and then I'm going to use my little plastic container there as my mold. So you definitely want to make sure you spray the inside of your mold really well. Listen, I just used olive oil and that worked fine, um, but you don't want it to stick. You don't want the concrete to like stick to your mold and then you won't be able to get it out. So I'm just adding in uh, my cement mixture here and I just started like building it up on the sides. At first I was gonna take the second half of this mold and press it on top to stay there but I didn't like how that was kind of looking. So I just used my fingers and I didn't have an issue with that. It stayed in place just fine so I just kept building it up where I needed to. I made the edges like about a half an inch thick and just like smoothed it out as I went along and I think this worked out so great. To be able to attach this to my wood, I'm taking these butterfly anchors um, that my husband told me would work and it worked perfectly. So I'm just taking the bolt part and sticking it down into that cement and then I built the cement up a little bit around it so that it would be nice and secure in there. You do want to make sure these are perfectly straight. Um, I did have to go back and kind of play with them a little bit. Um, so that it can go into your wood nice and even and you're not having to like fuss with it too much. But then I, whenever this dried, I let it set for 24 hours and then popped it out of my mold. It was really easy to come out. And here's what it's looking like. I wish I would have built up that um, top rim a little bit more, but I still think this looks so good. So next I'm just drilling the holes into my plywood where I need those bolts to go through to attach to my wood piece. So I did end up having to like play with this a little bit. It didn't work perfectly the first time, um, but after a few tries it went in and then I just secured the butterfly bolt to the back. And I forgot to record that part, so I did just hold up a clip of it here. This is what it looks like on the back once that butterfly anchor is attached. So next I wanted to add in my words. So I cut out welcome to our home with my Cricut machine and totally not thinking that when you have stained wood, you need to add in a top coat or a sealer or Mod Podge or something because vinyl is just not going to stick to that. Totally wasn't thinking, totally forgot about that step. And you're gonna see right here that my vinyl is not gonna do anything. I should have known whenever it started to come up as soon as I took my roller off, but no, I didn't think. <laughs> Here you can see it literally just came right off. So then I just grabbed my Mod Podge, put a layer down just where I wanted my words to be. This is just matte Mod Podge and you couldn't even see that I'd only put it in one little spot in the end. But once that dried, then I was able to add in my vinyl decals and it worked out just fine. And yes, I know my T is missing there. He did not want to stick to my transfer tape, so I just put him on separate. Once I had all of my vinyl on, I just took various paint colors because I thought the cement was looking a little too light. I wanted it to look a little more aged and more rustic. I really don't think I achieved the look I was going for, and I don't know if it was because of the the texture of it was the cement. I've never really tried to make cement look aged before, um, but I played around with like some dark and light shades of gray. I had my antique wax. I ended up putting some black in there. I was trying to blend it all together, trying to like make the cracks stand out more and make them have more depth. Long story short, it was not working and I hated the way it looked. So I just went over the entire thing with my mineral chalk paint, which is like a light grayish color. And I think because of everything underneath of it, it ended up working out just great. Like look how terrible that looks right there. It looks so bad. But to create a border around this, I just took some garden stakes that you can find, I, you can find them a lot of places this time of year. I got them from the Dollar General and I just stained those with my antique Waverly wax and glued them down to my board. Next, I'm taking this flexible stencil that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just taped off the areas I didn't want to stencil down and I'm just going to take my antique Waverly Wax and use my stencil. I created a row of this little flower and polka dot across the top 
and across the bottom of my little mason jar here. So to save time and to not make this video too crazy long, the next step I did was just add in some florals and a jute bow and that was it for this one. I think this turned out so great. It's not my favorite. It didn't turn out exactly how I had envisioned, but the idea was there. So I definitely want to try this one again. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments. So I'm starting out with this plywood board that's a quarter inch thick I had laying around in my garage and you need to cut it down to be 12 inches by 14. I cut mine a little bigger because I didn't know what size I needed at first, but once I had that cut down and then I'm ripping my boards using the table saw so that I have three boards that are 14 inches by four inches wide. Once I had my three boards cut down, then I'm marking the edges off and I'm going to cut them all down to be different lengths. The first one I kept at that 14 by 4 inches, the next one I cut down to 12 inches, and the third one I cut down to be 10 inches so that they all vary by 2 inches. And this time I am using my table saw. Is that what this one is? I don't even know all the names for these things, you guys. Once I had them, I did sand them down. I didn't show that part, but then I gave them a thin coat of ivory chalk paint. I didn't give this full coverage. I was fine with that wood grain showing through, but you could also make this, if you didn't have scrap wood or all of those saws um, available to you, you could use those MDF signs that the Dollar Tree sells. Um, they come with like three narrow rectangular boards and you could just take those apart and cut them down to different widths. And there you go. So once I had the boards painted, I just marked a uh, where I wanted to drill my holes. They were a half an inch in from the top and from the side. And I did that on all four corners on all three of my boards. Next, I'm taking my macrame cord and I'm cutting down four strands that are 36 inches long each. Once I have those cut, I am going to string them through my boards, starting with the longest one first and I'm gonna tie a knot at the bottom. And I just left enough hanging to where I wanted the little fringe tassel to for however long I wanted that to be at the bottom. And I did double knot this just to make sure it wasn't gonna come through that hole that we drilled. And we're gonna do that to all four corners. This was the easy part. Next comes the hard part of trying to make sure all of my boards are level. So I took my 12 inch board, strung my macrame through the holes there, and then I wanted to figure out how high I wanted the next board to hang off of the first. So I should have, now looking back at it, took a little piece of tape or a marker or something and marked where my board was then level and where it was going to sit on my macrame cords. I wasn't smart when I did this. I just eyeballed it and I ended up having to play around with it quite a bit to make it so that all of my knots were level and or in the same spot so that my board was at least sitting level. So save yourself some time and some headache with trying to Figure that out and just mark off the macrame on all four of your strings in the first place. But I just repeated that process for the top board and I don't think I show it, but once I had everything strung through, I just gathered all four of my macrame cords together and tied a simple knot the same way that I'm doing with all of these, just a basic knot to hold everything together. So you can see me struggling, trying to figure out where each knot needs to be and just kind of eyeballing it. And it was definitely a lot more difficult than it needed to be. And I also saw Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. She recently created a tiered hanging shelf and hers was so cool. I'm going to link it down below for you guys because she used all Dollar Tree products and it turned out amazing. So once I 
finally had that figured out, I'm just taking this boho style um, ribbon that is from the Dollar Tree and I hot glued it around only three of the sides. I didn't do the back. I probably should have so that it was kind of a buffer against my wall and doesn't scratch it up at all, but I didn't end up doing the back. And that's it for this one. It really wasn't too complicated. And if you use Dollar Tree supplies, this would take you no time at all to create. And again, I just love the simplicity of this. I love the neutral colors. I really need to get out of my comfort zone with sticking with these neutral whites tans and blacks. I need to do something more fun and exciting for you guys. So first thing I'm going to do is take all of these longer strips of wood and I want to cut them down to be roughly the same width. Um, some of them are not all the same because some were already pretty thin to begin with and I didn't need to cut those down. I just wanted them to be roughly the same width so that nothing was like really sticking out on the piece we're going to make and you'll see why here in a minute. Once I have all of those cut to the width I want, I guess that would it, what it would be the width, the thickness, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you want to say it is. Um, but then I'm just going to take all of my long strips and cut those down with using a miter saw. And I didn't measure anything here. I wanted all of my strips to be different sizes because we're going to kind of like build a scrap wood art piece, if you will. So it's going to be like a frame. You'll see what I'm talking about. Sorry, my arm is in the way here. I didn't realize it until after I viewed the footage and I didn't have any more pieces to cut down at that point, but you can still get the idea. And I know some of these machines can be intimidating to some people, but they really aren't that bad. If you just use all of your safety precautions and know how to use the machine, it can be a lot of fun and you can make some awesome projects. So next I'm just taking all of my scrap pieces that I cut down to size and we're just gonna play around with how they fit together. So we're basically just building a puzzle here of wood scraps. And I was trying not to have to like cut any of them, um, how I initially cut them down to all be the same thickness. I didn't want to have to do that, but I just didn't have enough wood to make this work. So that's why I had to do that part. And then I did want to cut them down to be like shorter, longer here and there. Um, I have like three or four different types of wood here. So I think this just turned out really awesome. This is my favorite project in today's video and I hope you guys like it too. I know not everyone has scrap wood just laying around but this was definitely a lot of fun to make. Now that I have all of my pieces laid out how I want them I took some various stain shades so I think I used like four different stains. I have espresso, I have a sun bleached, um, I have a white wash, that might be it for the stains. I do have Early American sitting there, but I didn't like the way that one ended up looking on the tones of what I had here. So then I also took my antique Waverly wax, and then I also have a Valspar like antiquing glaze, and I used both of those. I also left a lot of wood pieces bare because I just love the contrast of like the darks and the light tones. And I, like I said, I love the way this turned out. This is my favorite project today. So I'm just going to go through after I stained everything where I wanted I did let this all sit for 24 hours before moving on to my next step. I also only stained the tops of all of my wood pieces. I didn't think it was necessary to do anything else. You're only going to see the top and I wasn't sure if that would if I did the sides if it would prevent the wood glue from really holding on to these pieces the way that it should. I also realized there were some little gaps here and there um, in my wood and I had these little square dowel rods in a variety pack from Walmart and they, the smallest square size dowel in there just happened to be the perfect size to fit into some of these 
areas. So I just cut those down where I needed to and like look how perfect that fits. Like it was just a sign it was meant to be. But I just took my wood glue and glued that piece toward the front because I didn't want it sitting back. I wanted it to be like flush with like the front of my sign and that worked out just fine. So now I have all of my layout and I'm just taking my wood glue and I'm gluing all of my pieces together. So I started row by row and I just glued everything exactly where I had it laying. Um, I did have to like move this apart because I at first I didn't have my silicone mat down and I didn't want my wood glue to start sticking to my contact paper on my desk. So I had to put it all on the floor and then bring it back up and I just took like one piece of wood at a time onto the ground and then bringing it back up onto my table and I felt like I kind of messed up my arrangement a little bit but it still works out in the end. I would highly recommend using one of these silicone mats though that way this wood glue isn't going to just like stick to the surface you're putting it on and like rip it up along with it because you are going to have some of this glue seep out the back. And I just have a baby wipe there to wipe up any excess glue that's seeping out on the front. I had wanted to hold this all together when I was finished with um, one of my like long clamps, but unfortunately they were at my mom's house and I didn't have one. So I didn't clamp this together with anything and it still held together just fine. And once I had this all glued together, again, I let it sit for another 24 hours before moving on to the next step. So next I wanted to cut this down to make it all straight on the two sides where we have pieces that are just kind of random. I'm using, I don't even know what kind of saw this is, I forget, it's my husband's newest toy though. And um, I wanted to get a straight line and this was the easiest way to do that, however, this saw just kept like getting stuck on me and it wouldn't go any further than like five inches down the side of my piece and it did that on both sides and i don't know i don't know what the issue was i don't know why it would just keep stopping and i didn't want to force it and end up ruining anything so i did have to take this over to the saw i used initially and i just kind of had to like i don't know do it freehand and hope that it came out straight which it didn't it wasn't perfectly straight I, I had it a little off because I didn't have a guide to like hold it up against because all of these pieces were different sizes so anyways after that I, I got it as straight as I possibly could and here you can see it's kind of just like getting stuck and not going anywhere so I gave up on on this so I didn't want to ruin anything and I didn't want to hurt myself so then I got it as straight as I could and I figure I'll take some more of my scrap thin pieces and we'll just create a border to cover up. You can kind of see how like part of it juts out and then it's, it's just very wonky. So this frame just covers that all up, makes it look a little more finished. So it was a happy accident. And I just wood glued these um, frame pieces together as well. And then I clamped, I flipped my piece over, clamped it down to my table, and then took some very small brad nails that I have and used my brad gun to secure this frame to my wood piece. This next step is totally not necessary. It was bothering me that you could see some of these gaps between the frame and then the scrap wood itself because I did want to paint the sides of this so it was all white to match the front of the frame. So if that doesn't bother you, you wouldn't need to do this step. I just wanted it to look a little bit more seamless since it was very rough, <laughs> we can say. And next is the fun part. So I just cut out this cherry blossom decal using my Cricut and I'm just going to put it down on um, across my little scrap wood art piece here. I think this just gives like the perfect finishing touch to it. It's very simple, minimal, modern. It could be rustic, I guess, too. It could fit into that farmhouse decor for sure. But I wanted to make sure that um, all of the parts of the vinyl were like getting into those cracks so that it looked like it really was like part of this piece of wood. 
or a part of these wood scraps, like almost like it was painted on there because if you painted something on there, you're not gonna get it perfect. You're gonna have those, those lines and those gaps. So I used my scraper at first and it worked for the most part, but I did just go back in with my fingernail and just like made sure to press down all of these edges. So it was really like wrapping around all the edges of the wood. And I just love the way this turned out. And here is the finished piece. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I would love to know what you think and if you would ever try something like this, if you have a bunch of scrap wood just laying around. And here you can see how those vinyl pieces just really wrapped around all of the wood and I just think it gives such an added detail to this piece.